Yo, it's mail time. You already know what it is. Let's just jump right into it because I know you guys want to find out what it is that we are giving away because we're giving away a lot of stuff. All right, coming out from Maytech. They've got an F4 plus OSD plus PDB plus everything you need onto these two stacks. Let's open it up and take a quick look. The way this industry is moving right now is that everybody is moving on to these boards that have got that tiny little chip right there. You see it? That is an OSD chip because Betaflight, amongst other flight controllers and flight controller firmware software, is now integrating everything and making things like life so much easier. I love the OSD on Betaflight. Definitely supports that. It's also got a SD card on the back, but more importantly, this one's pretty interesting. First of all, it comes with these little anti-vibration dampener soft mounts, which are pretty flexible. But this is the first setup that I see that's got two stacks, right? You've got the PDB. It's got filtered five volt and 10 volt regulators for your FPV system. 10 volts awesome because if you ever kill like a 4S, you might actually experience like a little blackout. But it uses this little ribbon cable. So you plug this into there, other end goes on the back of this. You got the stack and Bob's your uncle. But I like this layout, it looked pretty good. It's got all the ESC pads on each respective corner. And then once you solder here, there's nothing really to solder onto this board, except for your, uh, your receiver and FPV system. And that's it. Flight controller, PDB. By the way, this is part of one of the giveaways today. So if you want to try and win this, this is part of that giveaway. Next up, let's go over to this guy right here. Coming over to you by Fly Color. I mean, first of all, plus one for the packaging. I really like this action here. All right, so this looks like a 20 by 20, 12 amp ESC stack. An F3 board, BL Heli S ESCs, 12 amp ESCs. Pretty much all you need. It looks like it would be great for your micro, two inch, maybe three inch builds. I don't know, three inch builds in my opinion should probably be at least 16 amps or higher. This one's rated for 12, so your micro two inch, I think this will be perfect and make the whole build a lot easier because all you gotta do is connect your LiPo pads and then you got your respective motor wire pads on each end. Mm-hmm. You know, those guys at Runcam, man, they are just killing it, man. Coming out with new stuff pretty much on a regular. As much as I change underwear, they've got something new. But this is something I've been looking forward to, guys. In my opinion, a very much needed product in the FPV community. We've got an FPV camera, and then we've got like the GoPro of the session, at least for the freestylers that like to record it. Why can't you just have like one camera that does it all? Well, guess what? This does. So let's take a normal run cam swift and this is the run cam split and as you can see it's a lot smaller because all of the processing guts are right here and this is a 30 and a half by 30 and a half mounting point so this can just stack right on top of your flight controller and this is where all the brain power goes in so again this is now your fpv camera which will still shoot it in four by three and then when it's recording in HD, it's your full 16 by 9, 1080. I believe this even does 60 frames per second at 1080. This is made for, you know, to replace your normal FPV camera. And on most FPV quad setups, that means you're gonna have a lot of props in view. Looks like it's not gonna be GoPro quality, but if you're a racer that just wants to record your races, this is gonna be a great solution for that because of the lightweight. It comes with this little Wi-Fi module that you can add on here. I believe it goes like this, which is kind of weird because I don't, you know, that that doesn't make mounting a whole lot easier. But I'm also guessing that this is probably temporary because you wouldn't want to have Wi-Fi on when you're flying because then you'll have RF issues. I'm not really sure. But I don't know when this is coming out, but again, this is the run cam split. Oh, my boy Daniel over from X Hover. Check this out. This is the new X Hover win. Frame. Take a close look at this, man. This is pretty cool. There's no lock nuts whatsoever. There are these PEM nuts, which which are pretty damn awesome. This looks like a, a proprietary PEM nut system. Very low profile. I love the black. Pretty awesome. This whole frame is really light. Comes in at 69 grams, bare bones, very minimal frame. Uh, but it does have carbon fiber side plates to hold your FPV camera, which I like. Other than that, two mil top plate, two mil top and middle and bottom plates, three screws, arm comes off, and you're good to go. This right here is like, I can tell, this is like made for like 10 inch props. Ready? Bam. I feel like I should just whisper because it's so tiny. 1106, 7100 KV motor. This is from Brother Hobby. They are now jumping into the micro game with an 1106. Now, I haven't done too much research, but I believe this is the first 1106 offering of its kind. The only other motor that I know of of this size, I believe is an 1104. This is the biggest motor that you can get for like a micro. This probably even spin up a three inch prop. So something to keep in mind if you're building 
a micro. T motor, guys. T motor. But this is the F43. Three. three. Damn, I feel like the two just came out like a couple months ago, but now they are on to the three. First of all, look at that, and they decided they're going to make it orange. It is a prototype motor, but that's probably why. But check it out, look at that. New bell top, very flat. Uh, it's got some indentation grooves so that the prop uh, bites its way in there. It looks like it's got a nice hollow shaft. Definitely a little bit on the heftier side. This wiring is a little bit thicker than normal. 2400 kV, uh, my opinion, just about right. So normally, I thought at least, that motors these days have now moved on to a screw that you put on at the bottom instead of a C-clip, but they decided to just go back to the traditional E-clip, C-clip. Last but not least, we have got a lot of stuff from our friends over at Lynx FPV, Lynx Heli. Guys, thank you so much, and they make these frames. Look at that, so many things to look at. So let's start with this guy. Lynx Heli, these guys make uh, a lot of pretty good frames for the brushed crowd. This is the Spider 73 Stretch X. Oh my goodness, the Stretch X deal is making its way into the brush. So if you're a Stretch X fanatic, Check these out if you want to make yourself a brush quad. I believe this is the Candy Rose Red. If you're not a 7 mil can fan and you're more of a 6 mil motor kind of guy, check out this one. This is the Spider 65 Stretch X. Also worth noting is they also come with a whole bunch of different mounts. This is the one for like the all-in-one. If you check out their site, they've got some for all the different all-in-one FPV systems that are out there. This is the Zap 65. Now check this one out. This one's special because if you look closely, that is lined with carbon fiber. I believe this comes in at just about four grams. So a teeny bit heavier than a stock tiny whip frame, but Look at that protection that you got, and I'm trying to squeeze it. Ain't nothing happening over here. So this is pretty interesting. If you crash a lot and you're worried about breaking props, this is probably the one you want to get. Next, we've got the Pika 65. So again, this is made for a six mil frame. Interesting design. They decided to kind of make it a little bit more minimal. This is all of the motor prop protection that you are getting. But if you check out their video online, they show one just smacking straight into the wall. It just falls down and keeps on flying again. So this I believe is three and a half grams. So pretty light as far as a brushed quad frame goes. And last but not least, this is the Spider 73 normal non-stretch X with an all-in-one camera mount there. Pretty sweet, pretty awesome. They also make these cool cases. Check this one out. So your quad goes in there, well protected, and you've got a lot of slots to carry your batteries. And that's it, so check a look down there, there's a lot, and when I say a lot, like, we've got a lot. We've got over 20 things to give away. So lucky you, this is what you're gonna do to enter this time. You have to have an Instagram account. You're gonna take a screenshot of your favorite Rotoriot episode, post it onto your Instagram, use hashtag MailTimeYo, Three, the number three, and good luck to you guys. And I'm back and I'm wearing something completely different, but you're gonna ignore that because I've got the winners for the next giveaway. So, winner number one, you are going to be Samuel Lee Lawson Jr., AKA Sam Love. So what's up, man? We'll be reaching out to you. You, sir, just won a Swift Mini. All right, here we go. I'm gonna try my best. Winner number two, your name is Andrija Ivankovic. I hope I got that right. You, sir, won a Swift Micro. So if you got a micro build, two inch, two and a half inch, maybe even a three inch build, you're gonna love that camera. And for our third and final winner for this last giveaway is Mr. Robert Skinner. Robert Skinner, you, sir, won a set of Racecraft three inch props. His new ones, the 3076. Basically three blade, four blade, and five blade. I'm gonna go ahead and send you a couple of sets of each. So congratulations to all the winners. Good luck on the next one. Oh, and we'll be reaching out to you guys. So, just hang tight. Somebody's gonna call you. Someone's gonna reach out and touch you. Like that. <laughs>